as a hindu student on campus i am paying tuition to the university definitely not to fund conferences uh, that speaks against my own identity my own culture yeah the conference really focuses on trying to showcase what hinduism and hindu should be following or doing whereas what they are currently practicing is wrong it is illogical or it is not supported and that is something so kanol uh, seeing the western ideology trying to be imposed on us the south asians is something very hurtful and something very disrespectful the hindu american foundation has called this a hindu hate conference do you agree with that assessment yes i do agree with them because i uh, see look at the title itself the first word in the title is dismantling it's like destroying mm -hmm. breaking down that's what dismantling means and if it's a truly scientific and academic conference uh, i don't think terms like dismantling should be used and dismantling also expresses this hate towards hinduism or hindus in north america Welcome to News Talk with Simone Ivani at the International News Channel. Recently, many universities across the United States and Canada have co-sponsored an upcoming conference called Dismantling Global Hindutva. They write, Hindutva is a political philosophy styled after European fascism of the early 20th century. There has been notable pushback against this conference. The Hindu American Foundation have called it an unbelievably public display of anti-Hindu hate. More than 40 universities are sponsoring this event and in the words of the organizers themselves this conference will examine the historical development of hindutva the fascist dimensions of the ideology and its perpetuation of violence against religious minorities and other marginalized communities Hindu Forum Canada wrote to a Canadian and American universities we urge you to not demonstrate a colonizer mindset and discriminatory behavior towards Canadian Hindus in the 21st century the organization further wrote to universities you or anyone may have one's own negative definition of hindutva but one's negative tone towards hindutva means hurting over a million hindus in canada and close to a billion hindus on the planet hsc also posed a comparison point that it's a shame that some of the academia's racism and discrimination towards hindus and hinduism is at play in times when taliban are openly destroying all norms of humanity and human rights to discuss this controversial conference we are joined today by two canadian hindu students mahershi jani and kush parekh thank you for agreeing to speak to me you guys thank you so much for having us all right so i guess my first question to you guys would be what were your initial reactions to hearing about the dismantling global hindutva conference i would say i was not surprised when i heard about this event and when i kind of look at their event rights page and stuff i wasn't surprised given that i have taken uh, south asian courses and how the north american academia works and teaches about hinduism or even about indian culture uh, i wasn't surprised to be honest i was personally very disappointed Academia is really an institution that is about inclusivity, advancing people and being constructive. And to have such a topic about dismantling that to spreading Hindu phobic ideology uh was really heartbreaking for me. Based on your reactions, then I got to ask you, what does Hindutva mean to you? So, Hindutva uh, it's a very broad term. different people have different interpretations of this term for me i'm just going to literally translate the word right in sanskrit hindu is nothing but uh, the land between himalayas and sindhu sindhu is indian ocean so hindu and tva stands for tattva essence so basically it's the essence of land between himalayas and the indian ocean that's how i interpret hindutva Absolutely, and, and I think uh, Kush has covered it perfectly. Where Hinduism is a very colonial ideology that was imposed on us, whereas Hindutva is for the originally Hindus, and we believe in Hindutva as really the definition uh, for Hinduism. No, oh, that's absolutely fair. 
So what kind of implications do you think that this kind of conference will have on the experiences of Hindu students like yourself? I think this really will determine students who are coming to university who are looking to feel inclusive, to feel uh, the equity and diversity, to be able to practice their religion freely. They'll feel that they'll be targeted especially professors who are part of this organization would be judging these students, making them at a disadvantage academically, where a university is supposed to enhance that. Instead, they will be discouraging them. And that is going to be a very slippery slope. Yeah, I think just to add on to that, um, it reminds me of one of my South Asian courses I was taking. And uh, I was really afraid to do my tilak and as you know, like in Raksha Bandhan, we hierarchies. I was really afraid to show that in the class. Right. It was kind of like very distressing. And I was afraid that, hey, the professor might label me as fascist or extremist. And then she might have this biased opinion about my assignments. So I was really afraid about that to express myself. So speaking about the universities themselves in that case, should the universities involved rescind their support for this conference? Absolutely. Universities are an institution where growing inclusion and also supporting one another is the basis of it, where education is the fundamental purpose and to have such a a conference called dismantling to be supported by these many people is very heartbreaking and very distressful. I do want to let you know that over 900,000 individuals wrote letters, petitions, and contacted their respected universities to let them know how this, or this conference was really hurting them, their sentiment, and their beliefs, and their religion. And this really speaks out that one or two people may be not correct, but 900,000 individuals, now that's the power of unity. Yeah, I think Maharishi touched upon this a little bit as well. Like, it's academia, right? And I feel like even the universities that are uh, portrayed on their website, are they themselves aware of uh, sponsoring an event that I that is like anti-Hindu? I believe that uh, there, I, I just hear, heard it somewhere, or even I, I read it that Harvard University, Princeton University, Concordia, they kind of disassociated themselves with this event when they found out that, hey, their logo is being used here. So I would say universities should definitely uh, perform an audit on where the funding is going. As a Hindu student on campus, I am paying tuition to the university, definitely not to fund conferences uh, that speaks against my own identity, my own culture. No, I, I absolutely hear you guys. But changing tracks a bit in that case, the Hindu American Foundation has called this a Hindu hate conference. Do you agree with that assessment? Yes, I do agree with them. Because, uh, see, look at the title itself. The first word in the title is dismantling. It's like destroying, mm -hmm. breaking down. That's what dismantling means. And if it's a truly scientific and academic conference, uh, I don't think terms like dismantling should be used. And dismantling also expresses this hate towards Hinduism or Hindus in North America. So I would say I agree with the their statement that it's there is Hindu hatred being propagated. And just quickly adding on, uh, the conference really focuses on trying to showcase what Hinduism and Hindu should be following or doing, whereas what they are currently practicing is wrong. It is illogical or it is not supported. And that is something so canola, uh, seeing the Western ideology trying to be imposed on us, the South Asians, is something very hurtful and something very disrespectful. We're well aware of whatever religion is about and well aware of how to practice it. And uh, having this sort of thing is very targeted. Mm -hmm. So speaking to something similar to what you guys just mentioned, according to Sadna, an organization dedicated to empowering Hindu American communities through faith, Hindutva is a right wing political ideology that is not dissimilar to white nationalism in the United States. 
What do you think about that? Really interesting that you uh, mentioned about this organization. Well, from like what I've seen about their organization, they never talk about Hindus. They only talk about uh, what fits their agenda. Mm. For example, uh, recently there was an eight-year-old boy in Pakistan uh, sent a, given a death sentence. Mm -hmm. He was a Hindu boy. Yeah. I don't see anything about that. And recently in Afghanistan, we all know the last Hindu priest refused to left Afghanistan because his family was taking care of that temple. Yeah. I don't see anything about uh, such incidents on their website. So I don't think their opinion truly represents uh, the Hindu opinion. And uh, just again, adding on now, um, the Western wars, the individuals who enslaved and tried to colonize India, and now you're saying that we, the ones who were imprisoned by them, are the same is, is a joke in itself. Furthermore, this organization, those who are following it, do not represent Hindus at all. They do not understand the current issues that they're facing and we are facing on a low global level as well as they do not speak out for those incidences that are happening in different countries and here where we are being targeted for the way we are practice beliefs and our cultures mm -hmm. and so if an organization is inactive and then imposes their views or their definitions quote unquote on us i do not take this organization seriously in, in any manner i hear you and guys. just to add on to what yeah, marishi yeah. g is also saying there is a very famous uh, saying in Hindi, meaning that uh, the teeth used by elephant to chew are different versus the tusk that is like, shown outside. Mm -hmm. And I feel like organizations like these uh, fall into that category where they are like, oh, yes, we are a Hindu organization, but they don't really understand what Hinduism is, what Hindutva is, and they just want to uh, spread propaganda about, against it. Mm -hmm. So you guys just mentioned targeting, and I know you do feel the same way, but I have heard that a lot of other people from Hindu descent or the Hindu dias diaspora are feeling that they are being targeted by vested interest groups and people who have a long history to target Hindus and Hinduism. Kush, you just mentioned a personal incident that you felt a while ago, but is there anything else you've noticed with other people in your life? Yes, definitely. I mean, um, there are, like, I don't want to name anyone, right? So I know that people who go to high school here, um, they definitely share these things with me, mm -hmm. saying that, hey, uh, I get bullied. I get bullied to wear the luck. I get bullied to uh, believe in a monkey god, an elephant god. I mean, this is just not fair, right? And the question that you posed that, oh, is this a targeted and uh, like a vested interest? Like mm -hmm. 100%, 100%. I mean, this has been there since the time of British. Um, so there was an education bill that was introduced in the British parliament, which kind of said, hey, uh, we want to, create brown people who will think just like the British. So they wanted to force fit their own worldview on brown people. And we, we still see it today in form of inferiority complex mm -hmm. uh, in India. And I would say this is a, a very like long strategy and Organizations, even if you look at the speakers, right? Um, I don't know how many of those speakers are actually academic, like they are from social science background or liberal arts, literature, history. I don't see any engineers, physicists. I mean, if it's a conference, try to make it diverse, right? So I, I think it's really uh, planned propaganda and they might have links with like groups like Urban Naxals. There's a book by Vivek Agniyotri, if anybody wants to refer to what that term means. And 
yeah, I mean, if Marishi G has to add anything else. Yeah. Marishi, what about you? Have you felt anything similar or someone you know has gone through something similar? Abs you know, I think uh, Kushi has uh, covered a lot of the great points in this thing, but uh, absolutely, I have had individuals who have approached me in the post-secondary education who have felt that they cannot openly celebrate different events and cultural days that are part of our religious holidays because they feel that there is no sort of administrative support and encouragement by them. There's fundings and uh, uh, allocated facilities for other places, but for Hindus, there is a lack of that. And there needs to be this sort of, like Kushi's mentioned, an inclusive space and environment where academic individuals are pushing towards bridging this gap that it truly does exist. Mm -hmm. I completely hear you and I know you guys just mentioned Afghanistan as well. So another quick thing that the Hindu Forum Canada has posed, uh, why are you singling out Hindus and Hinduism? But since you would never conduct a conference on political philosophies of Islamism, political Islam, jihadi movements or evangelist organization, orthodox aspects of Judaism, or any other ideology, but why are you taking Hinduism on target? So, would you guys have a quick take on that? Absolutely, I think, you know, we're around the world, like very currently Afghanistan, we can fully see the horrific incident that is happening there. We should for sure have academic conferences on how we can support, analyze the situation, and how we can ensure that this does not repeat or happen again. Hindus are very peaceful individuals that have given the world and the international community uh, yoga, peace, inclusion, diversity, and encouragement. And uh, taking those philosophies, and let's talk about that. Let's analyze those scriptures. Let's analyze and understand the values of the Vedas and the Bhagavad Gita that the Hindus have given to the world. Yes, definitely. I agree with that. Just to add on, like, See, good people, bad people, they exist everywhere. Mm -hmm. But statistically speaking or like scientifically speaking, if you look at these conferences, these courses that they teach about, they only talk about uh, persecution of other communities. They, I've never read or never studied in any of my South Asian courses about persecution of Kashmiri Hindus or even the Hindu Kush mountain in Afghanistan. They never teach it. I don't know why. But it does seem that there is a like very solid bias against the Hindu community. Mm -hmm. So I think academia should definitely encourage uh, talking about Hindu persecution as well. Right, and you just you mentioned about the speakers a while ago too. I'm not sure if you guys know, but the speakers or most of the speakers are of Hindu background. How do you feel about that? Seeing that it is a dismantling Hindu conference, Hindu Tva conference. A lot of the speakers um, have rejected Hinduism and have nothing to do with the religion in any level or stance. Also. I want to go back to Kushi's point earlier about the urban Naxal uh, fundamental issue that mm -hmm. is spreading. Individuals have some very interesting sources of funding that they receive and very interesting sources of influence that they are getting. Is this really an individual who is representing the religion or representing the cause? Or are these individuals who are just playing out what they are supposed to based on the funding? that they're getting. Furthermore, I believe academic individuals should not take part in any sort of these institutional work where they are actually excluding people. Academia is really a place to grow, learn, and expand. Definitely, I agree with uh, what Maharishi Ji is saying. And I also feel like the point about Urban Naxal and such similar groups they have a vested interest, so their funding has gone, um, this is gone. But coming back to your question about, hey, they, are, uh, they have a Hindu name, uh, they are Hindus, mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about it? Well, I feel that 
they do not know what true Hindutva, what true Hinduism is. They have never reflected upon it. And I feel like I'm, I might be going a bit more extreme here, but they are not completely qualified to talk about these topics. That's a very strong opinion. For both of you, do you guys have any final thoughts that you would like to share with anyone who's listening? I would like to say, reach out to your local Hindu organizations, those temples, non-for-profit organizations that are doing some great work on the local level as well as the global level. Reach out to your Hindu friends and individuals and let them know you support them. Let them know that they're not alone and they can openly practice and be proud to be Hindus, especially in the world of academia and especially in the world of uh, universities and colleges. There needs to be this growing bridge between professors and students, especially for Hindus who are being targeted in so many different ways. Yes, I think my request to your viewers would be that hey, don't base your opinion about Hindus that's built upon someone else's opinion, right? Go experience it yourself. Reach out to your Hindu friends, reach out to your uh, Hindu colleagues at workplace. Ask them questions. Hey, um, how do you celebrate this festival? What is the philosophy behind it? Try to understand that. And I would encourage, just like Maharishi Ji said, Go to temple, I mean, uh, go to Hindu organizations and temples within your community. Look at how they are celebrating the festival. They have a priest too, right? So you can ask the priest as well, hey, what's the philosophy behind it? Why do you do it? And once you have understood that, try to self-reflect upon it as a human. Oh, does this make more sense? Is it more better way of living life or nah that's completely up to you but don't judge a book uh, based on its cover page it's the same thing go experience uh, hindu is hindu to yourself no that sounds like absolute amazing ideas and i want to thank you guys for joining me it was an absolute pleasure to hear your thoughts Thank you for so much. Thank you so much for having us and uh, looking forward to the next one. <laughs> and thank you to our viewers at home for tuning in. This is Simone Ivani and you're watching the International News Channel on Tag TV. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest news.